All right, let's get working on the arm of our office chair base because I'm sure after this we will be armed and dangerous. So to start on the base of the office chair, I'll select the XY plane and activate a sketch. And from here, I'm gonna make an elliptical arc, which we can do from right here. And again, to draw these elliptical arcs, I simply choose a horizontal and vertical point, and then I can select my start and my end point. Now I'll choose horizontal and make sure that my start and end points are horizontal with the origin, just like that. And now I can start to dimension these things. Now the point for the ellipse is down here. So we'll make sure that this is vertically, say 0.75, and then horizontally, we'll give this a dimension of 1.5. I wanna add a little bit more thickness. So we'll drop down below the origin here. And then of course I can add my vertical constraints on these lines. And then we'll go with a dimension here of 0.25. Deactivate the sketch and let's sweep so we can have like a swept profile on our arm, which I think would look pretty good. And I'll start by making a sweep path. And I'll attach my sweep path to the origin and I'll go with an arc We'll make sure that the arc end and center point are vertical to each other. We'll give the arc a constant radius of, let's go with 50. And then I'll give a horizontal dimension of 16 for the start and end of the arc. And from here, we can pretty easily uh, just sweep the arc. So I'll choose additive sweep. And then our path objects I'll make sure I've got the right sketch in there. We'll select this as our path object. And from here, I'd like to round off the front end of this. Uh, so I can simply create a sketch right here. And I'll import these edges using project a sketch just to make sure that I can reference them in a way that I need. And I'll simply trace my references with an elliptical arc. And from here, I'll simply draw half my profile, just like that. We'll deactivate the sketch and we'll go with a revolve. And to choose a revolve axis, I'll just choose my vertical line right here. Now this is going 360 degrees and actually with very little consequence, but just to be sure that I'm doing it right, I'm gonna sweep 180 degrees, right? Just halfway around to cover the uh, rounded edge that I would like on my arm. From here, I would sure like to uh, work with shelling this out hollow. So to do that, I'll go ahead and choose my shell and I'll select these faces and I will keep it at a thickness of 0.2. I think that works pretty well. Now from here, I'd like to make a plane. So I'll go ahead and select my ZX plane. We'll make another plane and we'll offset that to be how about uh, negative 3.5. And we'll apply that. And now I can create uh, some sketches on this plane and I'll start off and I can reset my view here to go to the other side if I wish. From here I can uh, project to sketch. I'll select this face, maintain association, and we'll make sure that it's references just like that. And I'm going to draw a bit of a zigzag to show some rib supports here. In my 2D sketch, I'll grab this perpendicular constraint and make sure that my lines are all perpendicular to one another. And also, uh, to make sure that my lines are equal in length, as that will be pretty important, just like that. So this line, I think, is gonna be unnecessary. I'll grab this corner from here and we'll make that to say 1.75. Uh, 
and then this one is spilling over the end as well so that one probably won't be necessary then I'm going to extend this just a little bit with the line here and I can add the collinear relation and we'll give this line a distance that just goes in the solid a little bit of uh, 0.115 we'll do the same right we'll add a collinear from here to here we'll add an equal from here to here and we're fully constrained we'll deactivate the sketch we'll uh, use a thin extrude and uh, on side one I'll say 0.05 on side two I'll say 0.05 again so that we're extruding pretty central I'll change my view here just to take a quick look at what we're doing maybe I'll give it a draft angle of one degrees I'll change from two depth to two next so we'll stop and not go straight through uh, anything that we <laughs> don't want to and I'll say okay to that from here I would like to uh, create a new rib structure which I think will be a lot easier I'll simply say mirror and then we'll mirror the extrusion that we've just done I'll make my next sketch on the plane that I've created and again reset my view to see my existing rib structure I'll uh, project a sketch an edge here and here and probably this edge here will maintain source maintain association to source I should say and I'll draw a line from here to here and then here and here one last line actually from from here to here we'll grab a horizontal for these two points and then from here to here we're gonna say 45 degrees we'll deactivate and run one more thin extrude and these will be ribs that support the wheel that will go on there again we'll assign this to next maybe give it a very slight one degree draft angle just like that we'll say okay now I'll sketch back on the center plane here and to make things simple I'll select this edge here and this edge here and then just gonna come down to create a good cut profile I can add a dimension and we'll make sure that this line stays horizontal now that we're fully defined we'll do a revolve cut around this axis and then I want to change my angle from 180 to 360 and uh, there we have what's starting to look like an office chair base arm with all the uh, rib supports that we would want and now I will yet again select this plane that I've created to create a sketch on it reset the view and then I'll uh, come in here and we'll project this line and this line with maintained association as references and that gives me a nice little target to put a circle center on there we'll ensure that we are one inch in diameter I'll deactivate instead of thin extrude I'll choose regular extrude and I would sure like this to have a draft angle of about 10 degrees I'll change my view up here And we're going to say to next and that will be where we plug in our wheel 
and then lastly for a wheel feature I'll create a circle we will center the circle here and we'll go with something like 0.5 we'll deactivate extrude cut and I'll go down negative 1.1 Seems like a reasonable distance for our office chair wheel to be able to connect into. And then the very last feature, I want to set this up for an, uh, an additive boolean. And so to do so, I'll make an outline of perhaps what I want the next part of my chair body to look like. So what I'll do is create a line here, another line down here. then a perpendicular line there. We'll give this a vertical one inch. We'll give this a vertical 0.5. We'll give this horizontally 3.75. And then I'm gonna make an arc whose center lies along here. We'll give the arc a radius of one. I'm going to make a tangent arc to make sure these have a tangent relationship. And I'll say that this arc center, let's see here, from this point to this center is vertical, right? We're going to deactivate. We're going to do a subtractive revolve and we're going to say Y axis, just like that. So we're going to say that we're done with this arm and we're going to Boolean it onto our office chair center. So that's how we do it. Let's work on the central base part next and see how we can Boolean those together.